We're the innovators. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else will be ripping us off. <laughs> Before you know it, uh, it'll be uh, sea breezes in the Hamptons. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that feels so good to hear, man. Where's my daughter? <laughs> They're hot. <laughs> <laughs> what? That must that must just burn his ass. That must burn his ass now. I think he was hoping his daughters would never grow up. Because now they got... I saw a picture of him hanging out with a couple of his daughters. And one's just got the biggest set of tits on it. <laughs> just huge. Those big... Uh, those big Jewish tits, right? You just want to stick one between it. Ooh, you're soiling her. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. Yeah, go drive her off to college. You know what happens there. Legs akimbo in the dorm room. Ooh, you're Howard's daughter, aren't you? Yeah, he hung up on me in 86. <laughs> I'm just going to bang you. <laughs> oh boy! Oh! Oh boy! Oh! <laughs> oh boy! Uh, uh, Robin, she brought home a black guy. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. That car is a bitch. <laughs> I think that's wonderful, Howard. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! All right. That tool. So we start from this point. Five years of crap he gave us too. Oh, uh, we got we got tons of stories, tons. Mister, handle your battles on the air. Mister, oh, he mentions Opie and Anthony after we're off, kicked off the air. Why didn't you Why didn't you talk about us uh, when we were still on the air? Hmm? Why'd you go to Mel Carmazin and say you shut them up? Why Why'd you do that, Howie? I thought you fought your brave battles. I thought it were you were a brave guy getting on the air and. uh and fighting your battles. Ooh, I'll take on Imus. Ooh, that's a tough one. What happened? What happened? Why'd you go and run to Mel Carmazin and make Mel bring us up into his office and say to us, what time do you wake up in the morning and decide how you're going to fuck Mel Carmazin? Hmm? Hmm? Yeah, I remember that meeting. Mel telling us, Howard doesn't want you talking about him, so stop talking about him. Hmm. It's not how he was portrayed in that science fiction movie, Private Parts. <laughs> that fantasy movie. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, please, God, have his daughter bring home a black guy. Oh. He would shoot himself in the head. He would shoot himself in the head. <laughs> ah, and I realized it was all about Allison. All about my love of Allison. <laughs> Remember that at the end of that fantasy movie? <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, make us shut up. Oh, for years we had to sit there and then we couldn't talk about it. And then remember when we figured we'd say radio edit? <laughs> Instead of saying Howard Stern, we would say the word radio edit. And what happened? We weren't allowed to say we radio edit. We weren't allowed. He complained that people knew what radio edit went. Ooh, Mel, Mel, uh, tell him to shut up. Don't even say radio edit. <laughs> That's wonderful, Howard. And then what happened? We weren't able to say that anymore. Unbelievable. <laughs> so now we, start, cool. now we start from here, and we grow every day. Yeah. Every day this fine little virus yeah. called the ONA radio show will just start spreading all yep. over the country. And that's we'll, right. And we'll get our audience back, and we'll be on top again. Because that's how it works. Because we always win in the end. Always! You tool. Someday soon we'll talk about the time we got kicked out of his press conference when we were working <laughs> for the same company. Yeah. When all we wanted was a sandwich. Yeah. And it was escorted out by security on his word after he called our boss crying. Asking what we were doing there. As he sat in his limo outside the, uh, mm -hmm. what was it, the Park Plaza? Yeah. Had Sitting in the limo, out of it, waiting for conference. us to walk by so he could start his press conference. And the same day he was bitching that Stuttering John was thrown out of Billy Crystal's press conference. And what a pussy Billy Crystal must be that he can't handle Stuttering John being at his press conference. The same day, people. 
the same day he had us thrown out of his press conference because he was afraid we were going to do something. And the weird part is uh, this was way before the bad blood. We're mm -hmm. working for the same company. Yeah. He's doing a, a press conference. We're like, hey, why don't we go down, you know, and have lunch, check out the press conference, maybe even say yeah. hi, like, hey, what's going on, whatever. And Anthony and I are sitting in the back row with sandwiches. Yeah, this eating is, our finger sandwiches. This is when we first came back to New York after we got fired in Boston. And we're sitting there. No one knows who we are. No one mm -hmm. knows what we look like. And we're just sitting there minding our own business, and we're wondering why the press conference ain't starting. And all of a sudden, we, we start seeing, like, people looking at us and stuff. And then a security guard comes over and goes, dude, I am like the biggest Opie and Anthony fan, but I, I just got to know, you're not going to do anything when he shows up, right? Because there's a lot of nervous people here. I'm like, well, who's nervous? We're just sitting eating a sandwich. Yeah. We're like, no, man, we're just going to have lunch, check it out, and we're going to get out of here. All right, I, I just got to make sure. And he leaves. Another 10 or 15 minutes go by, and the press conference isn't starting. It's like a half hour late, and like the media that is there looking at their watches like, why is Howard late? Howard was late because he was waiting for us to get kicked out of there. He was on the phone with Ken Stevens yelling, yelling that we are to be removed. And we weren't even going to do anything. This is the hypocrite. So then uh, two huge security guards in really nice suits come up to us and go, you guys got to leave immediately. And we're thinking, we're, this is the same company. What are you talking mm -hmm. about? No, you really have to leave. Howard's very upset, and you have to leave. He's not going to start the press conference until you guys leave. And then they walk us out of there, and... And remember all the like the women in the in the in the suit you know jackets and stuff and they had their arms folded and they're looking mm -hmm. at us like you yeah. pieces of s yeah how dare you come to this press conference and we're just thinking mm -hmm. same company we'll check it out and and have sure. a, a, a few laughs no walked right by his limo he saw us leave he was happy we were gone got out of his huge stretch limo walked into the place and had the press conference yeah unbelievable what a hypocrite. You know, you watch the uh, watch the fantasy movie, Private Parts, and see see how he uh, he he portrays Imus as being a, a scumbag that that screwed him over during his days at NBC. Remember, I remember all the stories of how Imus was a bad guy and he was always behind the scenes trying to screw Howard over. That is nothing, nothing compared to the whining this guy did behind the scenes at Infinity Broadcasting. The whining and crying he did to Mel Carmazin, and how many meetings we had to take. And how many, how much wow, crap, did, where Ken Stevens was crying one day in his office over, over calls he was getting from Mel that if you can't control those guys, uh, I'm firing you. That's what Mel told uh, uh, Ken Stevens. Well, then that was the day Ken Stevens uh, quit on us as his boss. Yeah. As our boss. Yeah. He packed his suitcase and yep. was leaving the office saying, no, I quit. And then we had to yell at him and say, you can't quit. Yeah. Now go back to being our boss. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Go back in there and fight the good fight. Yeah. Go back in there and be our boss. We need you. And oh, this, okay, yep, guys. Yep. This wasn't a one-time thing. This happened all the time. Howard would constantly whine and cry. VMA parties? Mm hmm Weren't allowed in the VIP room? No. I'm like, wait, we're working for the same company. <laughs> nope. Why aren't we allowed in the VIP room? We were, you know, we were broadcasting live from the VH, uh, uh, the, the, the MTV uh, music or video? V VMAs. Video yeah, the music VMAs, music. sorry. And then we, we go, all right, cool, Viacom mm -hmm. has this huge area with nice food and free booze and mm -hmm. stuff. And we try to go in there and, no, you guys can't come in here. <laughs> yeah. But we work for the company. No, I know, but... Howard's in there, and there could yeah. be a problem if you're in could there. Be a problem in there. Oh, okay. Oh, God, just the hypocrisy. I mean, it would be one thing if, you know, you portrayed yourself as a pussy, but it's, you know, tries to come off like the guy that's fighting the fight. And meanwhile, you just, you don't, uh, you don't. It's pathetic. Sit there whining to your boss. Ugh. And then we'd have, and, we, and then we couldn't even talk about it. We couldn't even get on the air and, and talk about it because we'd, uh, you know, get our boss fired. Oh, well. So we got our freedom back, and we couldn't be happier today. That's right. That's what I want to tell people today. We are free. Boo we are free. So, all right. Jim was just sitting there just with his tongue hanging out. <laughs> just listen, man. We're just telling the truth. And that's what I was telling Bob yesterday. I'm like, Bob, we're just going to tell the truth, like it or not. Yeah, we, we shut up for too long. You know, and if Viacom wants to continue hating us be, because we're telling the truth, then what am I, mm -hmm. you know, what are we going to do, you know? Yeah. I just, you know, want to spell it out. That's the way it's been. This is no, uh, you know, 
nothing that hasn't been brewing for a while. And then it got it got ugly when we were supposed to re-sign with Infinity. So we said, okay, look, we'll re-sign. Everything looks great, but but we want to be able to talk about anyone and mm-hmm. anything. Yeah. As long as it falls within FCC uh, guidelines. And they were so scared that we were going to Clear Channel and we were going to broadcast uh, in mornings. Well, Q104. Yeah, and compete here in New with York. Them, and compete with. That was uh, definitely going to happen. So they uh, they were going to give us anything. Right. So they go, okay, sure, no problem. I got I got a copy of that contract. It, it says it right in there. Yeah. We can talk about anyone we want. Yeah. Well, that changed, and then we said, that well, lasted for a week and a half. But we're like, wait, it's in our contract, and the words were tough shit. Yep. That was it. Tough. Unbelievable. So, all right. That felt good, huh? Yeah, finally. 